Hello, so we continue with our reading of Deleuze and Gattari, What is Philosophy? And um, we were on page five, this is a slow reading, and we are with the idea that the philosopher is the friend of the concept, and they add, he is the potentiality of the concept. Okay, so potentiality is a concept, actually, a philosophical con concept that um, was created by Aristotle's in conjunction with the uh, idea of actuality, right? So the um, concrete deployment of a potential um, is manifested in the world, which means that if the philosopher is the potentiality of the concept, the concept is the deployment of a philosophy in the world. And here they come with a formula, philosophy is the discipline, think about it, it's a discipline, and they do insist in Mil Plateau um, about craft. There is a sort of a different position uh, towards discipline as perhaps some uh, Foucauldians would have. A discipline is an act of hieropoiesis, creation of the sacred, in some cases, when there is this um, creative attitude. So, of course, we'll have to understand better what do they mean by creating. And um, they do mention other practices like art. And they will explain that those practices are also creative, which we know, uh, but they create with other entities like percepts, uh, for example, or in the case of science, um, prospects. We will come back to this idea. So here they quote Nietzsche, which is of course an important uh, character in this book. And Nietzsche, they say, said that philosophers mo must no longer accept con concepts as a gift, right? So for example, from previous philosophers, um, like the concept of being in Heidegger. We shouldn't take for granted uh, a particular moment or embodiment of a concept. We should not merely purify and polish them, right? So, for example, read Heidegger and consider that, well, some aspects of his concept of being, we should keep some other aspects, we should abandon, etc. We can do that, but not merely that. The philosopher makes and creates the concepts, presents them and makes them convincing. Convincing for who? For the philosophers. Uh, because we will, as we will see, uh, philosophers don't like to engage, according to Deleuze and Gattari, in debates, discussions with non-philosophers, precisely because uh, in those conversations it is that is often a matter of opinion rather than elucidation of problems. And this is something that we will see is that the creation of a concept 
comes from a problem. It's not something that you do on Sundays, like, oh, let's create a concept. Uh, it sounds fun. Um, it comes from the conjunction of personal and historical problems, conceptual problems. But again, whenever we say conceptual problem, we're talking about also uh, worldly manifestations of the concept, negotiations with the concept. Right, so this is done not for the sake of consensus. And here they play a little bit with words. Um, but they also, without quoting him, they often mention Habermas and this idea of uh, democratic conversation um, uh, towards an agreement on universal. They don't believe much in that. Um, communicational idea of philosophy and this is where they oppose the concept and the universal philosophy doesn't deal with universals especially uh, since the French Revolution because since the French Revolution universal means in fact often national behind a universalist discourse there is often a national strategy. Now, the idea of a universal dates back also uh, philosophically to um, the medieval times and, uh, uh, and to the debate about uh, platonic ideas like realism, like are there um, ideas that actually predate their manifestation in the world as pure um, entities out there that never get to be manifested themselves. So why do they insist on a concept being not only universal, not only a universal? It's because they insist on the singularity of the concept. And by singularity, they mean, again, embodiment, style in a way, a style of thinking, but also a specific encounter with a uh, spe specific problem at a given time. And they will give the example we'll see later of Descartes' cogito, they analyze that concept. Um, Okay, so a concept is an embodied philosophical idea. Now, why do they write a book about philosophy? I mean, why is it important to do this course right now or more reading? improvisation about the uh, practice of philosophy. Well, Deleuze and Gattery are very sad that the term concept became this sort of um, uh, label in marketing and advertising, right? What's your concept? What's the pro concept of your product? And. Uh, they're very sad that some people call even them themselves conceptors, at least in French, in the French edition, concepteur, right? That comes from advertising also and, and, and design. So this is important today because clearly philosophy is becoming popular, right? When I started studying philosophy when I was 20, it was considered almost a disease, something that would certainly not lead to a decent profession 
Now things have changed and, and, and philosophy is more and more uh, seen as a matter of status, right? So it was really considered um, as uh, embarrassing. And now a lot of people on the contrary call themselves uh, philosophers with concepts and ideas. They are something slash philosophers. So this comeback of philosophy has to be taken seriously. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, philosophers have to engage with it also to make sure that um, it is not a light version of philosophy that is served to them. And here we'll finish today because we're already in 11 minutes. They oppose the philosophical concept as we've seen yesterday that they consider as meteors and we'll see what that means. This flying uh, robusticity of robustness of the concept and uh, the, um, the sort of uh, mellow commercial version of it, the, the jingle, the slogan. Okay, that's it for today. See you tomorrow.